Borgia is, um, is sort of Oz with papal clothes. Uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of lust and a lot of greed and a lot of murders and uh, other things. To me, I'm always compelled by characters that are extreme. This particular period is fascinating to me because what it is is it's that moment in time where mankind was kind of coming up through the muck and the mud of the dark ages and rising up, and, and this is the kind of low Renaissance, the beginning of the Renaissance, the birth of the Renaissance. And so what you have is this, this story of, the, of, of these men and women really, try, re, really looking up out of the mud and going, well, wait a minute, there's a better life up there. What I've been trying to do in creating these characters is make them as contemporary as they could be without being anachronistic. And I'm trying to just say, okay, I know for a fact that Rodrigo killed this person. Now I've got to try to figure out the reasons why he killed this person. So I work very hard to make sure that no matter what they're doing, that they have uh, some sort of moral compass that they're working off of, each character. Borgia family is surrounded by other families. It's a very kind of, uh, the equivalent today would, or would probably be uh, mob families. Uh, in Rome at the time, there were four or five families that pretty much dominated the world. So those characters are all part of the dynamic that the Borgia family has to deal with. So there's a lot of characters with um, conflicting agendas uh, uh, in each episode. And um, all of it, the, the, the members of the Borgia family have to either figure out who their friends are, or who their enemies are. Rodrigo Borgia, he is now the second most powerful man after the Pope. He has uh, several children, and um, the other two major characters are his, two of his children, Cesare Borgia and Lucretia Borgia. After Rodrigo became Pope, his enemies um, started a uh, campaign to blacken his name and to make sure that no member of the Borgia family ever became Pope again. Um, what I've tried to do in researching the show is to dig a little deeper, going back to sources, uh, some of them in Latin that aren't published uh, anywhere else. I've done research at the Vatican Library to try to find the deeper truth. Uh, behind the kind of mythology. The story will be told uniquely in our series from any other time that the story has ever been told. I think um, casting John Doman in, in the part of Rodrigo is going to be fascinating because John is an extraordinary actor. He's got an incredible range. He is very powerful, very funny. He can be sexy, he can be wonderfully authoritative. He's had a life experience uh, going all the way back to serving in Vietnam that uh, gives him as a human being an enormous richness of character. And I think he's gonna bring all of that uh, to the part of, uh, of Pope Alexander. It's a very tricky thing to cast families because they have to look like they came from the parents. So what you have to do is you have to cast three actors who look like each other, but you also have to cast three actors who are different enough from each other so you don't feel like you have the same character three times. And I think in that regard, we, uh, we've got three really wonderful uh, young actors. So uh, the cast is overall is very European. And I think it, it's, gonna, it's gonna give it a, a, an international feel, which I really wanted the show to have from the beginning. Borgia is set in uh, Rome, uh, starting in 1492. Unfortunately, um, not even in Rome can you find much of this particular period. So shooting in Italy became less of a necessity than finding a place that had existing palaces that we could use, but also uh, with enough space for us to be able to build the things we did. So it's a lot of fun. It's kind of like going to the, st the studios, like going to Disneyland. There's all these different uh, uh, rides to go on, you know what I mean? 
This is my first time working with uh, Oliver Hirschbiegel, and I'm just having the best time. Uh, I, I so admire his films. When he read the scripts, he saw the same series that I want to make. One of the things we've talked about is really trying to, this idea of the show feeling contemporary. During the auditions, we kept telling the actors who were auditioning, this isn't Shakespeare, it's Fontana. And so it shouldn't sound like masterpiece theater. It shouldn't t sound uh, very kind of precious and elegant. It really should sound like the way people talk in the course of having a real conversation about real things. The other thing that we've talked about, which I, I'm very excited about, is to use as much natural light as possible in, in shooting, both in the daytime and the nighttime scenes. And what's fascinating about the natural light idea is when you think that uh, in this period, people's lives were lit at night by fire. And so uh, what we're hoping is through torches and candles for the, for the scenes to have a very different feel to them, I think, it'll, uh, I think it'll enhance the show and it'll make it seem very, very different from anything else that's ever been on television.